What's up guys? Welcome to this Nemotus tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to make instrument and effect racks, how to use them, how to customize them, and some cool stuff you can do with them. This is going to be kind of a beginner to intermediate tutorial, mostly intermediate. So um, if I'm explaining anything and you're not getting it, just leave a comment below and I'll try to explain what's going on there. This stuff is simple, but then it can get complicated once you start building these things. So right here I've got a bass sound that I made a few months ago and it's kind of a mess. We're going to see if we can create a multiband imager to make it a bit better. So if you can hear the sound is kind of all over the place in the stereo field and uh, let's say I don't have any external plugins or anything and I want to be able to solve that using just Ableton effects so first I'm going to grab a spectrum here because that's going to help us out a lot later and just double click this panel so it pops up here so we get our sound coming through and then what I'm going to do to create a multiband effect is grab the multiband compressor sorry multiband dynamics so the multiband dynamics is usually the best plugin to go for when you're making a multiband rack or a frequency splitter basically. I've seen most people do it this way and it seems to give you the cleanest sound. It doesn't give you any extra phasing artifacts. Although this example sound that we're using is pretty phased out so we're going to see how it goes. First what you're going to do is hit Control G which puts it in a group and then click this button to open up the chains. We're also going to open up the macros because we're going to be using those soon as well. Then you want to duplicate this chain twice and you want to name one of them low, one of them mid, and one of them high because those are the bands that we're going to be creating in the frequency spectrum. So when you're doing a three band splitter it's best to use the multiband dynamics but I found that if you're going to do more than three, it's best to use an EQ. It's just going to get pretty messy when you're trying to do this. So I'll explain that later in the video. So first thing we're going to start on the lows is turn off the high band and take this band here, this compressor here on the mid and bring it all the way down. You can also do this by clicking A right here and dragging this guy and this will set your threshold and then you're going to bring this all the way up or actually drag down to set this to infinity so that anything above 80 decibels which is extremely quiet is going to not pass through so now if I solo this low band you should only be able to hear what's below this level I set down here so if I bring it up a bit you can hear that but it's only below 400 now. Now you're looking here though, 400 is right over here, 100, 200, 300, 400. There's still a lot of stuff happening above here. Um, so what I'll do is turn both of these, the input and the output, down on this mid band and we'll get even less of that happening. Um, but you're always going to get a little bit more. It's always going to show some of the signal here because it's there. Um, but if you notice, most of it is below, like right around here, most of it is below 60 dB, which is extremely quiet. But just know if you're going to compress this afterwards, that it's going to bring this, bring all these frequencies back up a bit and you're going to have to EQ them somehow to make the sound how you want it. So now let's go back and create our mid band now. So this one you want to do the same thing with the high and the low and then you can take this band and just drag down to set the ratio to infinity and turn the inputs and outputs down. So we just want the mid band working and you want to make sure the amount is set at 100 on all of these because if it's not, then it won't actually do any compressing here, which it's technically limiting it to a very, very low level 
because we're trying to get the signal as quiet as possible, you can't actually make it zero, um, as you can see in the spectrum. So if we solo the midband now, we see we get everything between these hertz settings. Okay, you can see we have only the mix. So again, do the same thing with the highs. This time we can turn off the low band and do this with the mids, limit the mids, and turn down that. Um, when I turn off the lows, the mid band is representing the lows and the mids. This just becomes a two band dynamics plugin or compressor. So that if we play that, we only have the high frequencies. All right, so now what do we do if we want to change where these bands are in the frequency spectrum? What we can do is go down here and set that to macro 1, and also set this to macro 1. Then we'd want to set this to macro 2, and this to macro 2. So now these are your crossovers. To more accurately show what's going on, I'm just going to solo the bands again. And you can see that I can open up that band with this macro now. And the mid band, I can control where the mid band starts and ends using this. And then I can control where the high band starts using this one. So the high band obviously goes all the way up past that and the low band goes all the way down past this one. So over here if I click on map it'll bring up the mapping settings and what I can do is change the range that these macro knobs control. Now right now doing this on a two band can get confusing. I already have points where I can overlap my I can overlap my bands. See this one goes down to 300 and then this one goes up to 3000. But in order to have the most flexibility, I'm going to leave it like that. So let's a b this and see what the difference is between the signals. So So it's very, very difficult to hear any any difference. I I think I can hear a difference, but it's like the tiniest thing. It could be my subconscious kind of creating that. Um, it's difficult to tell. But there's your three band effect, and now what we're gonna do is the imaging part. Um, I'm gonna use a utility for this, but utilities are not the greatest plugin to use to control your stereo field. So I will be doing this again right after using MSE, MSED, which is a free plugin from Voxengo. So you guys can grab that and also use it in this tutorial. So we've got six macros left, which is perfect. So on the high band, we can control the width and the panning. On the mid band, we can do the same. And the low band, we can do the same. So I just mac mapped those to the remaining macros. So now we definitely want to set these all to zero so that they're back in the center. Usually I would really never mess with the panning on the low. So in most cases we don't really need that. But I will leave it there for now since we had enough macro slots left. It seemed perfect. I'm going to rename these so this is high width and this is high pan. 
this is mid width and mid pan. And this is low. Oh, I think I named those those wrong. I put did them in the wrong direction. This is low pan. And this is low width. This one's actually mid width, this one is mid pan. Alright, so now we can control the different panning and width of the different frequencies. So we definitely want to get rid of any width from the low. It's already set at zero. I'm going to leave it a little bit up. You can hear the width come back in the mix. So I think there's actually a lot in the mix. So you want to tame that down a little bit. And then the highs, it seems like it's leaning a bit towards the right side, so we can take that down. When I crank up the width, it seems like it's leaning more to the right side, so I took that move it to the left a little bit. So that's kind of how you can use this to control the stereo fields of your different bands. I'm going to name this multiband imager. And I'll just name it rack because when I save stuff in my library, I like to name it rack, and then when I search for rack, it'll come up. I'm going to save that real quick. And now we're going to replace these utilities with MSEDs. So search that real quick and grab this plugin. I'm going to delete the utilities and that will automatically get rid of my macros. But luckily, it won't change the name of them. We can copy this plugin now to each of the different bands. There we go. So now we actually have four controls instead of two that control our stereo field. So we got to choose which ones can go in the macro. But what I can do is hit Control G again and create another group. And this will allow me to create multiple macros within this rack. So now, okay, if I move this, I can't right click here and say map to macro. How do I do this? So I'm going to click on this arrow right here, and then this will give me all the controls. Now sometimes there'll be a lot, and sometimes it'll show none. Um, so the best way to do it is to hit configure and move one around, or simply, if they're already there, you can just move one around and see which one it is. Sometimes they're named quite well, and you know exactly what it is. So we want to end up using the same macros that I put over here. So we want a width and a pan. So the width is going to consist of turning the mid down and turning the side up. Because if I want to extend the width, or if I want to accentuate the width, I'm going to turn the mid down and turn the side up. So first I'm going to map the mid gain to macro 1 and map the side gain to macro 1. I'll call this width and I'll call macro to pan and then I will map so over here mid pan and side pan are over here so we can map those to the same one too now I mentioned that we're turning the mid down and the side up the easiest way to do that is to go to up here in your mapping settings and right click and say invert range so that way instead of turning both of them down and turning one of them up, you're turning one down as you turn the other one up. So maybe the lows isn't the best way to show what's going on here. But we'll put the pan back at the center. So I've actually mapped this the other way around. So when I turn this all the way up, it's mono, or as close to mono as it can be. And then 
when I turn it down, it's the other way. So I'm going to invert both of these ranges now, and it should be good. You can sort them by clicking up at the top here. All right, so that one is set up. Now, I could do that with the others, but I actually don't need to. I can copy this entire rack. and paste it there. And did the same thing last time. Why isn't it letting me? There we go. And now we have a simple width and pan here. So we can get them over into the main macro area. This one is the high. So we'll map that to high width. Map this to high pan. Now, unfortunately, this goes from 0 to 127 and if you want to know why it does that you can look up how MIDI data works um, but that's not an explanation for this video in order to set this to the middle you'd have to type in 63.5 and I don't know if it'll actually take that value it's gonna put it at 63 which is pretty much right in the center so let's do the same mapping for the mid and the and the low. So what we can do now is basically turn both of these off so that all we have is our macros and we have complete control over the sound with just this panel and it doesn't take up too much space on our screen. And I'll call this one Multiband Imager Rack MSED. Now what I'd like to do is compare this rack to the one that we just created. So if I search Multiband Imager Let's grab the guy that we created before and do the same thing. Turn these off. I just want the macros. And what we can do is hit Control K to map the on and off buttons to a key. And I just chose the key one. I think that's going to, it'll turn both of them off. I would like to be able to, there we go. If I just click one off, then when I hit one, it'll turn one off and turn the other one on. So let's check it out. Let's check out if there's any difference. So there's a lot more lows coming through in this one. And I think I know why. Because of this low width here. The width is being controlled like I said, by turning the mid gain up and the side gain down. But we want those to end up at zero. See, this one is actually boosting it by almost 10 dB now when I've turned it down. So once again, I will delete these two and just work on this one rack that I will copy afterwards. So here, your zero is going to be 0.5. So unfortunately, when you're using external effects like MSED, it's only going to show you a range from 0 to 1, which is the minimum to the maximum. It's not actually going to show you negative 24 to plus 12. It's interesting that that scale goes to negative 24 to plus 12. So I can't just say that the minimum is going to be 0.5, because see that ends up being negative 7.1. I have to say 0.66 and type in as many sixes as I can. That ends up being negative 1.5. So sometimes you have to simply dial this in. Oh, I know why it's, it's at 1.6. You need to make sure that your macro is set to either 0 or 100% while you're looking at these values to make sure that your minimum and maximum values are correct. So I'm going to set that back to 0. And now I think if I type in 0.66, that boom it's zero. Cool. So I can go ahead and close my mapping from over here and then copy this rack to these other 
two bands. When you do that, you will have to remap these parameters. So now let's test this out one more time. So it does sound slightly different. I'll leave it up to you to determine which one's better, but I like to use MSCD more than Utility, absolutely. That's my recommendation. What I could even do now is group these together and link all of these macros together. Create all the same macros over here, but I could have a macro that controls the low width there and there, and the low pan there and there, and then switch between these two. So let's make sure that that's saved. And now what we're going to do is make a four band multi band rack. So I'm going to grab an EQ8. And once again, I'm going to duplicate this. Sorry, I'm going to group it and then I'm going to duplicate the chain. This time I'm going to duplicate it three times and get four. So I'm going to label this low. low mid, high mid, and high. I think you can pretty much do as many bands as you'd like using this method, but like I said earlier, the more bands that you have, the more phasing issues you're going to end up putting into your sound, um, and it's going to end up kind of washing it out a bit. It's, it's not going to sound quite as good. And you can do this uh, if you've got Fab Filter Pro Q. You can do this with Pro Q and set it to, to either natural phase or linear phase, and that will solve some of your phasing issues with a compromise of just a bit of latency. So, what we're going to do now is set these all, turn off my main ones. I only need two bands per EQ. Okay, so that's the preliminary setup. Now what we want to do is map our frequencies together. So we're going to set the first one to macro one. This is just going to be our low, right? We're here on low. This is going to be our low cut. Then over here, this frequency is probably going to actually sit somewhere around here. And this is going to be our low to low mid cutoff. Um, and the word cutoff doesn't really fit in this box, so I'm just going to call it low to low mid. Now on the low mid, this lower cutoff is going to be set to the same value as the low, low mid. So that wherever I set this, this guy will follow. Now this top one is going to be mapped to macro 3. The frequency here is macro 3. And this is our low mid to high mid cutoff. Following that pattern, this one is going to be mapped to the low mid high mid cutoff. This is going to be mapped to macro 4 and call that the high mid to high cutoff. And this one here is going to be mapped to that one as well. I can do a final one here where I map the final frequency at the very top to this one and call this high cut. So now for the mapping. I'm going to click here again and kind of organize myself starting with the lows. We don't want this to take up the full spectrum because as you can see I had a lot of overlapping and there were times where I was just kind of canceling out my signal. 
So I want the low low cut here. The low cut is going to not really come up. The highest I would want to cut is around 200. And you can always change these. But from there, we're going to say that the low to low mid cutoff is going to be, say, from around 80. At the very lowest, I would want the, basically the low mids are going to be coming in at 80. That's the lowest that the low mids could possibly come in. And then the highest that the low mids could possibly come in, I'm going to say is going to be 800. And that makes sense. That's 10 times 80. Um, and following that same pattern, we can go to the low mid, high mid cutoff, set this to 800 and set this to 8,000. So that's the highest and lowest values that the high mids will start to come in and that the low mids will stop. Um, Alright, so now from the high mid to the high, the high mids I do want to start somewhere around 2.5k. So this you actually have to type in 2500. And then they can go all the way up to, uh, let's say, 16k. And then the high cut, I'm going to set this to be around 2k is good. So there are still some instances where this will overlap, if you see, but um, you kind of have to use your brain with these settings because this will still give you the most flexibility um, when using this red. I'm not going to do the imagers on this one just because um, I already showed you how to do that and I think it will be pretty straightforward if you'd like to go ahead and do that yourself just kind of go back in the video and copy what I did for this plugin. This one's going to be called 4-band FX rack blank. So you can go ahead and place any effects you'd like on these four, four bands. So just to check that this is working, we're going to play our sound. So I realized that I've actually set the low mid can go all the way up to 8k and I don't want that. This band here I'd like to set this so that this goes from about 400 to 4,000. They do need to match up so that you're getting the whole frequency spectrum. Yeah, I'll need to change this other one right below here to 400 to 4,000. So this is still actually setting the range for my low mids, but you know, this is just to give a lot of flexibility. So you have four bands, the low mid doesn't actually have to be in the low band range if you want to separate the lows and have, have the lows be that much of your frequency spectrum and then split the other three up among the rest of the frequencies. Well then there you go. Um, and then I can cut that off, round it off a little bit if I like. So this gives you a lot of control. So let's make sure that I save that. So that's how you make a four band effect rack or a four band frequency splitter. Now what we're going to do is say I want to combine two sounds in one and control them with the same MIDI data. So let's do some very simple MIDI data here. So we Turn that down a little bit. So we can, look, it says drop an instrument or a sample here. We can actually put a sample in there too. And then that'll put it in a, a sampler for us, which we can right click and change to a sampler if we like. And that then becomes an instrument. 
Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use, let's put in an analog. So now we've got both sounds playing at once. Already it sounds a lot cooler. We want to turn these both down a little bit and then start designing our sound. So this is this goes a bit beyond the idea of um, you know just making racks, but I'm going to go through this process anyway. So you just want to pick something random. I'm trying to make this into a pluck. I'm going to drag this down. And right away I know I'm going to want to control this decay time here. So what I'm going to do is just like before, go into configure. This time there's nothing here, so I have to hit configure and grab the decay. So I'm going to do this after I'm done designing my sound, only because what you can do is say there's a decay from here and here that I want to control as well. I can map those all to the suit macro inside Serum and then map that macro to my macro in the instrument rack. So let's go, let's keep moving. So I'm not really explaining what I'm doing here just because this is a thing for instrument racks I'm trying to get a sound down quick. But um, this instrument that I make will be included for my Patreon supporters in the preset pack and I will also include the serum patch in case you're not using Ableton so you can definitely get this sound also. I'll expand this preset more later, um, and that'll be in the pack, but for now I think that sound is good. So what we can do is control the amount of the FM, and we do that by using the aux. So here, if I click on what's controlling the FM here, I can right click and say aux source macro 2 um, and that's because I would like to set this decay actually I don't need to set this decay to a macro because it's all on one like I said if I had used these then I would need to do that but I didn't um, I can also set this cutoff aux to macro 1 so there you go So now I can configure these and I've also got my decay here. So it's a good idea to change these so that you know what you're what you're using. So this is cutoff and this is FM amount. This isn't actually controlling the FM amount. In fact, it's just controlling the amount that the FM is moving. 
So the FM amount you can control by just this knob. So let's start mapping these here. Down here I'm going to put FM amount. This is actually not the FM amount anymore. This is FM aux. And see, it's obviously doing nothing when this is turned all the way down. Look at map that there. It gives it its name already. This cutoff, I'm going to put on macro 1. That's an important one. And decay on macro 2. That's also an important one. For analog, we're going to leave this sound the way that it is for now, just to keep things simple. Um, but if I put it back on... So this is where you definitely got to set your mapping settings right. Because we want our cutoff... The cutoff is fine. The cutoff is fine because we use the auxiliary setting. But the decay is not fine because when I have it set at zero, it's completely zero. So at the lowest, I'd like it to be around 200 milliseconds, and at the highest, be it around. To find out the highest, you just crank it up and then turn it back down to where you would like it. There we go, that's probably good. Now, I'd also like to control the decay of analog, obviously. the amplitude over here, you go and you bring this down so there's no sustain and your decay time is right over here. Map that to the decay. Since the amp 2 is not on, oscillator 2 is running through amp 1 so that's all that we need to set. And in serum here it said 724 was my max so I can type that in and it will give me, uh, oh, if I hit 0.724 it will give me 724 milliseconds and then at the lowest it was 154 so now these decay times should be matched up Now this cutoff is also a thing that we'd like to map onto analog. So if I go into my filter here, I'm going to choose low pass. Low pass 24 is fine. And turn my resonance up slightly. And map the frequency to the cutoff. And what's happening here is that in Serum it's not going all the way down if you remember. It's only controlling the aux, which is from the start of the blue line to the end of the blue line. So this is set, it's telling me 506. So we're going to rename these because their name, their name keeps changing when I map new things to them, which is slightly annoying. This was the decay. So now we're going to set the cutoff to match the cutoff from Serum. So that was 506 if I remember. I can simply type in 506. And we've got a nifty little buck sound. And then you can take any number of effects after this and add them into the rack. And then control them with these macros. So say, now the reverb is only affecting analog. But if I wanted to affect both, I can take it out of the rack and then select both this and my rack and hit Control G. And now that will put 
this behind the serum and the analog. And now my main macros are going to be here. I still can control my instrument effects here, but I can map these to here, and I can map any of these will end up here. Um, I think that about <laughs> so I think I've explained pretty much everything about instrument racks and effect racks that you can do except for one thing say that I do like both these sounds I'm gonna put them at the same level and I'm gonna turn my reverb down a little bit just because it's a bit too much Say I want to blend between these two sounds instead of having them play at the same time. How would I do that? Well, what I'm going to do is open up, click this button here called Chain. And what this does is I can select a range of which these two instruments will play. And then control where in that range I am using this orange bar here called the Chain Selector. So what I'm going to do now is, if you notice up in my arrangement view, that when I click on the chain selector, I get this huge thing. It's not like a normal parameter where it's just maximum, minimum. With the chain selector, there's a huge range here that you go way up and way down, and that can be very confusing. It goes off the screen. So you always want to map this chain selector to one of your macros. I'm going to put that on macro 4. Now these two instruments are still playing at the same time. So what you need to do is, if you notice, there's a little gray bar above these blue bars, and you want to grab that and grab it. I'm going to grab that and drag it to around the middle and then grab the other one from the other side and grab it drag it to around the middle as well that way when I play this I have just my analog playing on one side I can fade in the serum until I'm right in the middle and then both of them are playing at equal volumes and then I can bring this all the way to the end and I'm just playing the serum patch. All right, and if you have more than one, say, I'm just gonna duplicate this real quickly so that I have four. Instead, I can right click and say, distribute ranges equally. And that will give me this. Now, this is good. This is good for switching, doing hard switches. So if you notice, it's not really gonna fade between the two instruments, but I can easily. just switch between them like that and that might be okay for what you're trying to do but just like what I showed you before you can grab these gray bars up here and fade between the two instruments um, and you can also do that with effects if I were to group this and have two different reverbs and change my settings on one of them I could duplicate this, open up the chain settings here, and do the same thing. So that pretty much wraps it up for what you can do with instrument racks and effect racks. I'll be making some more of these for you guys that you can download if you are a part of my Patreon. I'd love to have your support there. There's a lot more cool stuff you can get over there, so definitely check it out. Link is in the description. Link to download MSED is in the description. Check out some of my music if you got time. And that's it. Peace out. This has been a Numotus tutorial, and I'll see you next time.